LeBron James in his prime with one year of training versus Deion Sanders. One pass from the goal line. Who are you taking? How good do you think Air Bud would be in the 90s era of the NBA basketball, baby? You and your best friend versus 54th graders in a game of basketball. If you win, you each get a million dollars. But if you lose, the thermostat in your house gets set to 80 degrees for the rest of your life. Do you take the challenge? If you could go back in time and change the outcome of any sporting event, let's talk in Super Bowls, NBA Finals, football, basketball, hockey, what would you choose and why? And we're back, episode 78, Barcast Comedy, here at Resolute Brewery. Today I'm joined with the Jersey comic, stand-up comedian, Drew Garland. Hey, hey, how you doing? It's really great to be here. Thanks for having me. Yeah, we're excited to have you. So since we're doing a sports episode this time, I figured we should just change up the first question and let's just name some random Colorado sports players. Just go back and forth. Oh, man, I'm going to start with the Joker, Nikola Jokic. No Sean Moreno. Nice. Oh, that opens up a whole new avenue. Um, let's go Wes Welker. Wes Welker. Ooh, that's a good White one. White man across the middle. How about uh, Eddie Royal, my favorite old Bronco receiver? Nice. Um... You know what? Rest in peace to Kembe Mutombo. Ooh, that was I was about to do him. Uh, Bruce Brown. That's a good one. Oh, rest in passage, Bruce Brown, making better money somewhere else. Um, what if we just do this the whole episode for 30 minutes? It's not <laughs> it's going just, well for me. Uh, <laughs> Nobody would rather. It's yeah. just people just talking sports players. <laughs> oh, yeah. Would you rather be tackled by Ray Lewis full speed or take a fastball to the ribs from Otani? Am I wearing pads if I get tackled by Ray Lewis? Yeah, you get the pads. I think Otani would kill me. I think that that's like a choice between like paralysis and death. And I'll take the hit from Ray Lewis, man. You know, I think I played a little football back in the day. And like, you know, you just black out for five to ten minutes and then you're back to normal-ish. Yeah, the ribs, I feel like that's just going to be painful. Just yeah. way too much just hitting you there. And I don't feel like Ray Lewis can run 120 miles an hour. No. And how much is he backing up? Does he get like five yards? Prime, yeah. Five, five yards, prime Ray Lewis. Okay, yeah. So it's kind of like the Oklahoma drill. Like we're both on our back. I pick up the ball and then he just destroys my brain. Maybe you imagine in your head you're juking him. Oh, yeah. I know. Out. Yes. I'm like, beat button, beat button, beat button. Boof. <laughs> and then you wake up in the hospital like, did I win? Yes. I'll like, you did great, kid. Yeah. Would you rather your team win the Super Bowl and then never make the playoffs again for the next 20 years? Or go to five straight Super Bowls, but lose. Um, I'm a Panthers fan, so I would take the loot, take win the Super Bowl, and then not make the playoffs for 20 years because we're doing that. <laughs> like, but we haven't won the Super Bowl. We're just not making the playoffs right now. So uh, that sounds nice. Pretty much, yeah. That's a good point. Because I'm a Broncos fan, and the question was 10 years, and then I was like, wait, that's pretty much what the Broncos are doing now. So I'm like, let's bump it up to 20. Bo Nix, man. Bo Nix is making some little moves, and actually, I teach in DPS, and these two kids have Bo Nix jerseys. So the Bo Nix nation is growing. Oh yeah, they believe. <laughs> <laughs> Who do you think would win in their prime, LeBron James or Deion Sanders? LeBron James is playing wide receiver and has got to catch a pass on the goal line. Yeah, yeah. It's Dion, man. It's Coach Prime. Coach like, Prime. That's Scope Buffs right there. Like, it's Coach Prime. Like, if we even want to talk about, like, the greatest athlete of all time, like, we can throw out Jim Thorpe. We can throw out Muhammad Ali and stuff. But, like, is it Dion Sanders and does he beat Bo Jackson? Does he beat Bo Jackson? Yeah. That is a good point. <laughs> Interestingly enough, Wayne Gretzky was a semi-pro lacrosse player, too. Damn, I didn't know that. Mm -hmm. I mean, I guess those skills kind of transfer. Yeah. The way it plays, but yeah. I was thinking, I want to say LeBron, you know, he's just built different because of the memes. But, like, Dion's mind is built different, man. Like, I feel like he would, like, I feel like LeBron wants it, but I feel like Dion would just internalize that challenge to the point where, like, he couldn't be defeated. Yeah, he's not going to take it. Yeah. If yeah. anything, he's going to get past interference before he lets LeBron oh, exactly. catch a ball yeah, on Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then he'll be like, run it back, run it back, run it back. What do you think the shower situation's like for LeBron and Bronny James? You think they go together, separate? Um, you know, Bronny's a kid, so he might be nasty. You know, he might be either doing these like little quick showers. He might be doing sprints afterwards because like they're not making the vets. Like JJ is not making the vets stay and do the wind sprints, but like Bronny and oh. Dalton Necht are hanging out there. That's like, the real reason why they're doing those sprints so LeBron could shower and they don't have to deal with that issue. Yeah, I know. It's like it's gonna be so cool to play with my son. Is it? <laughs> Is it? I can't wait for the first meme when like he throws the ball out of bounds or something, mm -hmm. or gets a turnover, and LeBron's just like looking like J.R. Smith at him. Exactly. You're like that's been the parenting style the whole time. We're gonna learn a lot about LeBron as a parent because we're gonna see like 
how does he deal with like his son, not just in like a social situation, but in his work. He's like, yeah. he's, it's like take your kid to work every day at the Lakers. Now you're working, yeah. Yeah, no, I'm excited for it though. It's like watching Deshaun Watson play in the train wreck there. Everybody's like, we got to get him out. I'm like, no, man, let's just, let's just keep seeing how bad this can go. I know. And then more lawsuits come out. We're like, Deshaun. Like, you had two jobs, and one... You're not doing either of them, bro. Like, you're not doing either. He has more lawsuits than uh, touchdowns thrown Yeah. with the Browns, which yeah. is hilarious. That's like Russell Wilson with the Broncos in his uh, bathrooms. I saw that. That was hilarious. I followed that, and then when he finally beat it, I was like, good for you, Russ. Good for you, Russ. Good for you, Russ. I was writing for Russ for a while, but I can't do it no more. Thank God. Yeah. Yeah, he's someone else's problem. How good do you think Air Bud would be in the 90s era of basketball? You know, like the physicality? Bad, man. You think he can handle it? No, Airbud is clearly a 3 and D player. You know, he's got that sweet outside J, and, you know, he can pester you at, like, your hand level. Like, he's got Muggsy Bows. You don't think like, he's got that bite, you know? He's going to be biting ankles at that level. They're going to be letting that stuff slide. I know, he could, especially with those 90s bowls. I think Michael Jordan goes up for the dunk, and he just bites his arm. No, he, he undercuts him, too, man. <laughs> oh, yeah, you're right. Just breaks his ankles. I think, well, let's think about what is the ideal, like, era of, um, you know, Airbud, because I think it is, like, the late 20 teens space and shoot because like Airbud is perfect on those Warriors teams yeah that he would be great out there with them all oh, I could imagine him doing that too joining Kevin Durant and all of them I know and then and then the team colors already go with his lustrous coat it's like I did that in my uh, NBA 2k17 franchise when I was playing the game it was like my player it was like where do you want to go and I was a point guard and I'm like I'm going to Golden State hell yeah hell I'm yeah like, forget it might as well play a couple minutes I'm gonna win the ship the first year I mean who's mad to get drafted by Golden State these days like Shit probably rocks. I bet you Steve Kerr is like a really cool boss. Yeah. If you're going to have one, that'd be the one. Yes. All right. You and your best friend versus 50 fourth graders in a game of basketball. If you win, you get a million dollars each. If you lose, the thermostat is set to 80 degrees in your house all the times, and you have to pay the bill for that. So when I was married... Uh, my ex got really mad at me because one time I was doing a BuzzFeed quiz about your best friend and I clicked on something and she was like, that's not what I would do. And I was like, yeah, but it's what James would do. So this question is for James. <sighs> I don't know if we would win. But you're going to take the challenge? Yeah, we would take the challenge. I mean, who wouldn't take that challenge, you know? How often do you get offered that for that amount of money? Yeah, and then like, what if, what if like the, what if the fourth graders gas? You know, like, think about your average fourth graders. Think about watching a game of kids playing. Like, only, like, two out of 18 are going to be any good. Yeah. So, while I'm we're, realistically, we're playing verse five and then a bunch of pawns. <laughs> you just got to be swimming through them, you know? Yeah, you just keep exactly. the ball up high. You just got to move. I know. You're just constantly swatting them. You got the only thing you got to be worried about is because of the Steph Curry. You know, all these kids can shoot now. Exactly. Deep balls are going to be there. They have no moves. They don't have to dribble, but they will drain that from three. Oh, they travel all the time, oh, man. Like, I, when I go out on the playground, I teach in a middle school. These kids travel like it's their job, man. They're like fucking Anthony Bourdain out there. <laughs> they're just running around. They yes. can't stop me. <laughs> they're like overhand palming the ball. Like, freaking, like, they're going over defensive linemen and shit. I'm like, that's not. Come on, man. No. <laughs> that's You're that's playing Spider-Man ball out here like it's stuck to your hand. They're bringing back the 90s physicality. <laughs> Oh yeah, oh yeah, and dude, they don't even play five on five. It's like it's like crowd versus crowd. Crowd versus crowd. <laughs> yeah. So maybe this I side should... of the court versus that side of the yeah. court. <laughs> Give me two months to train. Two months to train. Come yeah. up with some strategies. Oh. Give me two months to make a better best friend who's better at basketball. I would like to see that. I saw it was like a Japanese game show or something, but they took like a couple soccer players and they played against uh, like fifty fourth graders. Nice. And they were beating them. They would just run with the ball down the oh, line, okay, and they cool. just, it was like a Call of Duty zombies. They would all just kind of just swarm in behind him, and all of a sudden he was just training them with the yeah, ball. Yeah. And I'm like, that's genius. The Pied Piper with literal children. If you had a time machine and you went back in time, do you think you could stop Mike Tyson from biting off Evander Holyfield's ear? No, that seems so inevitable. Like, that seems like a confluence of events, you know? Like, I, I don't... You get a ticket, too, with your time thing. Yeah, you know, I know, but I'm just like, sometimes when bad things happen, I try not to like micro target like single decisions I made. I'm like, that's a confluence of events. It has to happen. That whole night, yeah, that whole night happening, like it was Evander, it was Mike Tyson, he got out of jail, you know, like he had all the aggression, this pent up stuff, and like he was going to bite someone's ear off. You stop him, he bites off your ear instead. Yeah, I know. I was like, I was like, I feel like I have a better chance of stopping Evander Holyfield from taking the fight. Be like, hey, can you hear me? You want to keep doing Are that? you stopping me? He bites him in like the neck like a vampire Jeez. Jeez, I know. And then they both get face tattoos. Yeah. <laughs> All right, this is usually my uh, first question on the podcast, though. Do you have any good bar fight stories? No. 
have not been in a good bar fight. Um, oh, I do have a good bar. I was a bartender and I almost got in a fight with a patron because uh, I overserved him. And, uh, you know, he was a college professor who trained nurses and he knew I was becoming a teacher. And so, like, I gave him too many beers. Well, his, his questions got more and more, like, angry and shit. And he was like, what are the three best reasons to be a teacher? June, July, August. <laughs> and I was like, oh, that's dark. Um, and then finally, like, I was like, okay, I'm going to call you a cab. So I called this guy a cab. And then, like, less than, you know, five-ish minutes later, he's like, I couldn't do what you're doing. And I'm like, okay. And he's like, I can't lie to people. And I was like, oh, bro, like, go stand in the parking lot. And so I went to the other side because it, like deli- it was like a sandwich shop on the other side. Yeah. And I was like, Servando, this guy's too drunk. And I overserved him. And he's getting angry. And he was like, oh, you fucked up. And I was like, yes, Servando, I did indeed fuck up. And so, like, when I came back on the other side with Servando, the guy had gone in the parking lot, and he was, like, laid up against, like, the brick sign of the bar. Yeah. So I didn't get beaten up by a drunk college professor, you know, but he was a dick. That's good. That would have been a gr- crazy story, getting beat up by your professor. Yes. And you're like, and I still filled that class. Mm-hmm. Servando thought I was such a bad bartender. Like one of my friends came in who was in fact 21, but looked like he was a child. And when I served him, bar- like Servando was like, "You going to jail? <laughs> going to jail? I'm not gonna bail. Ba- I'm not gonna bail you out. Yeah. Give you cigarettes, protect your butt." And I was like, "Damn, Servando!" Yeah, so, I used to always mess with people like drunks at the bar. I'd be like, "Cause I always ask how old am I? Cause I always look young, and I'm like 16." Yeah. And they're like, "Dude, shut up! Stop telling people." And I'm like, "I'm 16. What is the problem?" And I just will keep saying, "They're like, shut up." But it's, uh, it's okay. It's my bartenders are the friends. So they're like, it's fine. They're like, God damn it. <laughs> like, stop doing this again. They're like, his, his ID is vertical, not horizontal. Yeah. My, I used to tell people that beavers are extinct. It's my favorite thing to do at dive bars. But the new one I've been doing lately is, do you know that roundabouts are the leading cause for ter- tornadoes? That's a good one. That's why Oklahoma has the most tornadoes. Because they have the most roundabouts per GDP or per capita. Okay. Okay. You need to say two. It's like they make them like more apt or make something. More, like make it sound more, like more scientific. More dangerous. Yes. Aptitude. Yes. You're right. That would work. I'm, I'll have to add that in there. Workshop. Yeah, like it. false science. The bar stories, and then people are like, yeah, yeah. yeah. Usually, I, I just imagine let what them the bar lead. stories were like before phones. Oh yeah, I can't imagine. It's the Wild West, man. Dude, when I started the podcast, one of the inspirations was some guy was telling me, he who worked at Lockheed Martin was telling me that they had a uh, Wi-Fi on Saturn's ninth moon. And then uh, one day I saw an article on Twitter that there could be aliens on Saturn's ninth moon. And I tagged my friend. I'm like, dude, he wasn't fucking lying. That man knows. (laughs) Oh, did you see the Masked Singer recently? Who was on it? Who who was it? Who was it? All right, I'm going to show you the clip and you have to guess. I might know who it is if it's a Colorado legend. It's a quarterback? And he's a number one draft pick. Yep. And he's friends with Demarcus Ware. There we go. So is this is this John Elway? This is John Elway. Hell yes. There we go. <laughs> oh, he still has his creepy too many teeth smile. Yep. <laughs> wow. It's like they put too much of his face on top of his head and not yeah. enough in his chin. That was just hilarious hearing Elway sing. <laughs> oh yes. That was like That was great. And then the guesses for the judges were uh, Brady, Elway, and Aikman. Okay, I bet you Aikman sings the best out of those three. The one girl was like, it's Tom Brady. It's Tom Brady. And they're like, he's not a first-round draft pick. I know, like, also, it's Tom Brady. We'll be like, also, Tom Brady has money. Yeah. Like, And I guess John Elway has some money, some steakhouse money, but, you know. He's older. He's blown off a lot of it now. Well, yeah, probably like buying people drinks in Colorado when he was drafting shitty quarterbacks. <laughs> to make up for it. Yes. All the drunks are like, all right, I'll buy you a drink. Just don't get mad at me. Yeah, just like stop talking to me about Josh Allen. I don't want to fucking hear about Josh Allen. Oh, man. <laughs> he probably gets nightmares about that. Damn, dude. Oh, a good Bronco, jer- uh, good Bronco story, too. I used to sell uh, Bronco jerseys back in the day when they were good. I'd buy them from, like, China, you know, yeah, those, yeah. like, ones. And I would sell them for, like, the same price as, like, the Dick Sporting Good ones. It was a f- good deal for me, good deal for the people buying them Yeah, yeah. for the price. But then uh, one day, somebody else started selling them on Facebook Marketplace yeah. for way cheaper than me. And I was like, God damn it, they're killing my price margins. Yeah. So I was like, I'm going to message them and be like, hey you got to bump your prices up and we can know both make more money. But then I was like, that's unethical. So then I just reported him for selling knockoff jerseys. No, I feel like that's capitalism. I feel yeah, like there's I some capitalism. market to there. myself. Yeah, yeah, there you go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, I was like, that's easier. That's some white collar gang warfare. <laughs> there you go. What's your favorite jersey you have? Um, I wore it on Friday night at the first show I did. I have a McDonald's All-American neon yellow Zion Williamson jersey. Oh, yeah. 
he's my favorite player. I'm wearing his shoes. This is one of his jerseys. Um, I want nice things for him. I want him to play a full season. That'd be crazy to see a full season. I know, How man. dangerous. He's down to his high school weight. Ooh. Yeah. He could. <laughs> no, he. I believe him, you know, but like... I'm pulling for him. Yeah, that's the thing. It's like, don't want to have... I mean, at least Grant Hill had some good years, you know, but you don't want to have like a whole injuries made it never work out situation because that's yeah. just kind of unfair. But like he is a tight end that plays basketball. Who's your biggest bust of a jersey that you have? Oh, man, I got, a, I got a very sweet, very awesome Duke football Daniel Jones jersey. Ooh. <laughs> well, there's still time on that one. I know, yeah. We still, like, still got he, a season? Yeah, jeez. If he doesn't get benched before the end of the season, I can wear it a couple more times this year, and then after this year, it's going to be kind of pathetic. Yeah. <laughs> Probably mine is, uh, let's say, I mean, obvious Russell Wilson. Oh, you bought one? I bought a bunch from China. Yeah. I, I got out of them all just in time. Yeah, like, you I did. Was yeah, you them. did. It was a fire sale, and I'm like, I ain't buying any Bo Nicks until we are in the playoffs. Who's who's your most obscure Broncos? Obscure that I had? Uh, my favorite, I had an Al Wilson. Okay, yeah, nice. One, I really loved him. He was my favorite player back in the day. That, pl- uh, that play of him playing the Raiders in the snow and he like just jumps up and just like fucking belly slams the guy down nice did you ever commit to the kicker jersey kicker jersey no nah me neither (laughs) (laughs) eddie royal i had eddie royal jerseys big eddie royal fan jay cutler no sean moreno i actually have a jay cutler and it's my trashiest jersey like it's got like stains and shit on it but i feel like when i perform with it i need to have like a loose cigarette oh yes (laughs) And I'm like, it's Cutler time, baby. You just got to have an attitude on stage. Like, God damn it, I'm up here. Yep. <laughs> just sit there for a second, light the cig. Everybody's waiting for you to tell a joke. I know. And it's like an inside bar. And you're like, you can't do that. Be like, watch me. I could see it. <laughs> you get $250,000. But every seat you sit in for the rest of your life doesn't have a backrest. Do you take the money? Like cars, too, and planes? Yeah. That's interesting. You're just always in a seat. <laughs> you just somehow get a fucking stool every time. And a one-time payment, 250k. Is it taxed? Uh, untaxed. Oh, okay, okay. That does make a difference. Like for uh, me, I feel like. I, yeah. What would you say? I don't know. I mean, it's tough. 250k is not a lot. Uh huh. I feel like I would probably take it, but then I would regret it in five years. Yeah. Well, you're you, probably you, sooner than well, five like years. You, well, if you don't regret it in the short term, you're going <laughs> to regret it in the long run, man. You're an old man, and you're reduced to like stool sit. I guess you'll have the best posture of any 85 year old. All the time, dude. just doing yoga all the time. Yeah, dude. Like those things when like your collarbone breaks and they make yeah. you have good posture. I think I need the backs of chairs. I think like, I think money is lovely and glorious, but like I think. What's the number for you? What's the number for it? Maybe a million. It's a blank check, a million. Maybe a million, because like I don't want to be like it's twenty million, because like no, it's not. Like you know, but like million dollars is very cool on tax. Yeah, like, right, that's you pretty got, good. Then you're pretty set for a little. Yeah, pay for a house and then pay for a car and then you know. Pay for some scientists to come up with a new chair that doesn't have backrest yes. and that's in zero gravity or yes. something. Or maybe you buy a motorcycle which doesn't have a bike rest. Maybe you become a motorcycle dude. Yeah, there you go. Motorcycle guy and you buy a pool in your backyard so yep. you're just floating in the tube. Yep. And all of your chairs are like a motorcycle rest and then you just commit to the bit and like <laughs> don't don't acknowledge the fact that like you s- took the money and you regret it. All right, this next one's one question with old school Kurt. And his question is... And here's your one question from old school Kurt. If you could go back in time and change any sports outcome of any sport, football, basketball, baseball, hockey, if you could change any outcome of a sporting event, what would you choose and why? I know exactly what it is. It's the 1999 uh, National Championship game where Duke lost to UConn. Um, That was such a good team. That was Elton Brand. Like Shane Battier was on that team. That was Will Avery. That was Corey Maggette. Um, That was Trajan Langdon, dude. That was the Alaskan assassin. Like that game broke my heart. And I did not like Khalid El Amin. I did not like the UConn team. Just for them to win it too. You're like, God damn it. Yeah. So I I know what, I mean, there's a lot of Duke UNC games that have gone different ways, but like there's a lot of games where like Duke beat UNC, but like that UConn game, if I can get that one back that would be glorious you don't want cam newton to jump on the fumble oh man um i feel like that was a destiny game like von miller was a man possessed yeah. and like the broncos were very good so like that was like it was manning's last season yeah it was like that's why i feel like the year before we got robbed it was ray lewis's last season man it was just bullshit if ray lewis played another year after that we would have won yeah. i like how that question became are you a bigger duke fan or panthers fan and i'm like oh god damn it uh, Duke fan. I want that championship. And like that would have been a great one for Coach K, too. Yeah, that would have been one to have. For me, I was saying it would be Raheem Moore. You know, if I could just push him back like two more steps. Yeah. 
Oh, man. That would have been beautiful. It's a good one. What about Derrick Rose? You know, maybe just tell him not to play that one game. Oh, man. I think uh, it's going to happen later then. I always trade for Derrick Rose on my 2K team. And then, like, I keep his stats low, but I turn his, like, intangibles and clutch up to 99. <laughs> so I'm like, I'm like, the old dog still got it. He's back. He'll still hit the shot at the end of the game. Turn his injury up, too, and every once in a while, you're like, oh, God yeah. damn it. Yeah. High risk, high reward. But you yeah. put him out there. And then 2K does this awesome job of, like, replicating the tattoos. Yeah. And so, like, Derek Rose has this sick Illuminati tattoo, like, right really? here. And so, like, you see it in the replays and you see it in the gameplay. I'm like, <laughs> you made some choices there, brother. All right, uh, what was the first joke you ever told when you wanted to become a comedian? I thought I'd do in stand-up. Um, so this is interesting because uh, I, I had a premise before I had a joke. Um, and the premise was that I am kind of medium handsome, like not enough to make money, but like enough to like, you know, turn another medium attractive head. And so I kind of equated the medium handsomeness to weathermen. You know, like a weatherman on TV is not an anchor, but you know, he's kind of a good looking dude. And um, that eventually became medium handsome people problems, which was the first set I told on stage. Nice. <laughs> yeah. I have shorter jokes that I like, I like more. Do? It went well because I did it at a showcase with friends and family. It's become a lot better. Um, and there's a sweet Danny DeVito reference. So, yeah, like it stayed strong. Yeah. It's nice that the first one is still one I, I feel comfortable going back to. That's always good. What's your favorite video on the internet all time? Like you just got to stop and watch every time you see it scrolling. <sighs> Uh, I love this one clip of Macho Man Randy Savage talking to Arsenio Hall about masculinity, where he's like, Arsenio Hall is like, hey, Macho Man, do you ever cry? And he's like, oh, yes, the Macho Man cries. I experience every emotion under the rainbow. And like, but he's like, but the important thing is that you got to get back up, take the 10 count, and then you'll be a real Macho Man. <laughs> Dig it. And I'm like, I fucking love that, man. Like, way to go, Macho Man. That's great. It's like my friend uh, made his AI bot talk like Macho Man. Yes. And it's the funniest thing. He'll be like, hey, AI, can you explain 9-11 to me? And he'll be like, oh, brother, sad day. Planes hit the building. Oh, yeah. And you're just like, oh, it's just the most tone deaf. <laughs> I just crack up every time. We'll be like, hey, do you guys want the bar tonight? And they'll be like, hey, brothers, we're going to the bar tonight. You coming out? Oh, yeah. All right. And I'm like, God damn it. <laughs> All right, this next segment is a blind ranking NFL teams based off how edible they are. Okay, cool, yeah. So we're going to go one through five, yeah. and you just rank them. And I'll give you them. So first team, one through five, for how edible it is, is the Miami Dolphins. Oh, man. Uh, dolphin is a delicious... One's most edible, five's yeah. least. Dolphin's a delicious meal. It's seafood. It's from Miami, so there's spices involved. Can you eat dolphins in Miami? Well, you can eat you can eat dolphins. I mean, if we're going to get to the Steelers eventually, like dolphins are still like a better option than a piece of steel. True, yeah. Um, so you can eat this fish called dolphin, but you can't eat like the mammal dolphin. But in a in a spot, you could. Mm -hmm. and in, like, Just got to deal with PETA. These guys are liars. Um, but uh, <laughs> put that on the internet. Um, let's let's put let's put it in the middle three. It's edible, but not ideal. All right. Next one we're going to go with, the New Orleans Saints. Again, good food city, good food city, good food city. What, uh, you going to eat a saint, though? I mean, I would eat a saint that's been deep fried like a beignet. <laughs> you know, like put powdered sugar all over it, let it sit. You know, a little bit of cinnamon, a little bit of Cafe du Monde coffee, too. All right, next one is Arizona Cardinals. Man. A little cardinal bird, you know? Oh, yes, dude. I Yeah, like the little tiny no meat on its bones bird. Um, it's edible, so that puts it equal with the Miami Dolphin. Arizona, I mean, I guess they could smother it in green chili. They could just, like, green chili the hell out of it. But you know what? I got to keep that number one spot open, so number one, f number four. Number four? Yeah. And then? I, you got to give me the Green Bay Packers. All right, and then we got, yep, next one is Green Bay Packers. Number one, dude. Cheese. Cheese for the win. Yes. It's got to be the easiest I, one. Yes, I kept <laughs> you that didn't number take one the bait, open. You kept it there. Good, yes. And then the last one was, for your five slot, the New York Jets. Yeah, that's metal. Um, and also they serve terrible food on planes, so... Yeah, that's just a I'm, double loss. <laughs> yeah, I'm fine with that. I mean, green chili over Cardinal definitely beats New York metal airplane food. Yeah, no, I think that's the perfect list. Actually, oh, while thanks, I was bro. Yeah, actually, while I was waiting for you to get here, too, I saw on Twitter uh, some man on a college campus was going to eat 25 chicken fingers in one sitting. He made a big event poster and everything, and all these people showed up, and he ate only 19 of them. 
And then the crowd was cheering him on. It's like he didn't train. It's like you didn't train. Like, you got to deliver. Like, first of all, if you promote an event, you got to deliver. Second of all, you got to under promise, over deliver. 25 Third, is not like, did that you many. train? Yeah, yeah. I was like, I feel like that's like me. I could probably get to close to 25 sauce or at least or no 19. Sauce. He, had he had sauce. Yeah. It was 25 Canes ones, and he had a bunch of sauce. Oh, Canes. Yeah. Um, those are quite large tendies. Yeah, 25 of those. You only yeah. got through 19, though. Was there a time limit? No time limit. He just Dang. gave up. You got to deliver, man. I'm disappointed in that man. I was just mad the crowd was cheering him on. Yeah. Did they boo him when he failed? No, they cheered oh. him. They were like, you did great. We're so proud of you. That's like, that's trophy. That's like participation trophy culture right there. Another guy I also tried to get on the podcast was uh, uh, Billy Fire or Billy McFarlane, the Firefest guy, you know? Yeah, I do know that guy. Yeah, he was going to do the podcast. He said he was down. And then 30 minutes before, his agent responds to me like, these are his rates for doing the podcast. Oh. Guess how much it was to have him on the podcast for an hour? Mm, $70. $2,500. Joe, <laughs> bro. I'm like, man, I saw the documentary. You can't scam wow, me again. Yeah. Also, which po I want to find out which podcast he's been on and be like, hey, where are you getting that good, good podcast money? Yeah, now I'm seeing it. Every time I see him somewhere, I'm like, hey, I'll come on that show if you're paying people that yeah. much. I know exactly. Be like, hey, I'm his, I'm his tag. You know, I just go on right after him. I'll do it for 500 I'll tell you the truth. Yes. He came on my podcast and told me it at all. All right, who do you think will win in a game to 21? Five NBA players or a grizzly bear? You get to choose the five NBA players. Um, so Giannis, Luca. Um, Steven Adams. Okay, that's a good um, one. Jonas Valanciunas and uh, Onyeke Okongwu. Okay. So I think that, like, you know, you have a combination there of of some outside shooting with Luca. You have some some bears, some beasts of your own down there to get the rebounds. And then Giannis just has that versatility and that speed to move in and out. It's he not full court. Eve. It's 21, right? Yeah, so 21. it's all on one half. Yeah. So I think you just have to like keep keep boxing out the bear from behind, mm -hmm. you know, keep away from the claws, and so yeah, just keep the ball moving, you know. Yeah, if you keep rotating, and then you just gotta let Luca do his magic. Yeah, Luca I, Luca never gets near the bear. Uh, yeah, I like that, and he just has Steve Adams protecting him. Basically. Exactly, he's yes. just in the post yes. fighting the bear. Yes, that's exactly what I was saying. Like Steve Adams, Jokic just in the middle, people guys wrestling a Jokic bear. Jokic is a good big man, yeah. And too. then you just got Curry, these other just outside shooter people. But Luca, I like that one. Yeah, yeah, I respect that. <laughs> You got to be careful with Jokic because his brothers are going to come in out of the stands and like DQ oh, you, right. DQ you for the bear. No, that's why I want Jokic. They're going to help protect me from the bear and all of them. All right, this next one segment's a great one too. Basketball's called a duck, Mary kill. Nice. Fuck, Mary kill, but you know for TikTok. Okay. So uh, here's the three people, your three choices. Okay. We got Jokic. Okay. Luca. Wow. And Jason Tatum, and you can swipe to see duck, Mary kill. I'm marrying Luca. That Luca's a fox. Yeah, definitely. Um, dang, man. Um, I don't want to hate crime, Jason. Uh, let's see. He's so corny that I'd have to. I have Russell Wilson PTSD that I couldn't yeah. go with Jason, that I have to kill him for that reason. Jokic looks like a lot of girls I see on Hinge. <laughs> um, like, that's actually a pretty good Denver, um, like, expression to make. Yeah, that's Denver, baby. So maybe that is a kill, and then maybe that's a fuck. There we go. Yeah, there yeah. you go. I was respect. like, that's a little PTSD for me being like, I do see a lot of girls wearing that jersey with that, like, are you ready to disappoint me? <laughs> Yes, I am. We also used to do a segment way back on the podcast called uh, Guess the Crime. Nice. And you get five mug shots and you have to guess the crime committed. But it's a very rough segment because it'd be the comedians trying to not commit like a say anything yeah. <laughs> stereotypical. And I'm like, all right, we should probably just get rid of this segment. Bring, bring that segment back, but make them all dating profile photos. Oh. <laughs> you get 50K cash or you can play in one NBA or NFL game. Kind of like Putin, you know, where they won't like hurt you. Oh. Which you choose. Like that kid who's disabled who gets to like yeah, run a touchdown much. in? Okay. Like, you know, Putin will go play in the hockey game and score like six oh, goals. Oh, Putin. I hear you now. Okay. Yeah, yeah, in the yeah. NHL. I think the 50K, um, I don't know if my ego would like feel that good, like scoring like a fake goal or a fake touchdown, but like 50K yeah. is nice. And and as we discussed before, this is untaxed. So. Untaxed. You're like, yeah, just give me that money. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I would use that on frivolous things. What if it was like 10K? Ah, uh, that would really help with my car. It's a real nice payday, bud. Yeah. 
but again like i feel like i feel like i would like how would i capitalize on like my fake goal or like my fake free throw because like the worst thing would be if i tripped yeah you're thinking how can i make the money yeah, like, <laughs> you pull a daniel jones <laughs> trip at the goal line <laughs> there oh my day my guy daniel jones yeah <laughs> My dream when I was little was to play in like the mascots versus little kids football game, you know? Those are fun. That would be so fun, but that's still my dream nowadays. But I want to be the mascot rushing yeah. for 250 yards and just stiff arming like three kids. Derek Henrying it all the way up. Yeah. Just going all the way. That would be even better now. <laughs> I mean, I respect the mascots who actually play in those games because the kids know. Like, I have my own kids. Like, I don't, I don't, I don't hold back. Like, we compete, we compete, and when you win, it's real. They're playing the mascots. That's what they want. Yeah. So weird thing. You can cut this if you want, but I was in a hot dog eating contest at my school, um, and a teacher came up to me and said, "Throw the contest. It's not about you. It's about the kids." And I refused, <laughs> and I won. How many hot dogs did you eat? Nine and a half in five minutes. Damn. <laughs> it was cool. I got a salt headache. Yeah. But like I told her, I was like, they'll know. They'll know if I throw it. They'll know, yeah. Yeah. So you won, and then uh, what was the reward? And what was how many hot dogs was second place? Uh, second place was this kid, Zion. Another Zion, actually, uh, who won. He got four hot dogs. Another teacher ate two hot dogs and then spread the bun and the ketchup around the plate the whole time. <laughs> And then my esteem was, I work at like a refugee magnet school, so we have a lot of students who come from other places and um, don't speak the language, but this little Russian boy brought another little Russian boy up to me to congratulate me, and he shook my hand like so, so respectfully, being like, I saw your, your, at, or I saw your accomplishment. Thank you. Thank you. And I was like, yeah, I did eat a lot of hot dogs. <laughs> Yeah, no, you're probably the hero of the kids for that, for doing that. <laughs> that's crazy. No, that's the clip of the episode. That's definitely staying in. <laughs> nice, nice. That's great. <laughs> this is a weird one. This was a party in another country. Uh, I was in the Peace Corps in Mozambique, and so I had a party called Bro Summit, where like yeah. Peace Corps is kind of like a liberal arts college, where it's like two thirds or seventy five percent women, yeah. and then the rest are bros. So I had all these bros to my house, and we had a bean eating contest. Bean eating? Yes, and we like measured it by the bowls. Pinto beans or like? No, like just maybe they were pinto beans. Black beans? Yeah, black beans and okay. shit. Like you know, like good, like feijão. Yeah. Um, and um, my buddy Luis ate 21 bowls of beans, which was still six bowls, ne like more than the next closest person. God damn. Yup. That man's a champ. We need to get him on the podcast next. Hell yes, you do. That means the next Joey Chestnut. <laughs> That's crazy. He showed us his belly and I poked it. <laughs> Did he throw up afterwards or was he good? No, he was a champion. He was a champion. He just went back to drinking. Yeah. That's what I hear Joey Chestnut does. And actually, does. he was funny too because he was like, Drew, I'm sorry. I ate some rice and beans before we even started. <laughs> He's like, I've been cheating. I've already yeah. had three bowls. <laughs> That's great. Uh, what's your hometown scandal or like high school scandal, high school story you and your buds always talk about? This is a good one. And I thought about this one. Um, so I actually went to high school with the Krispy Kreme heirs, um, the live and good family. That, that company started in Winston-Salem, North Carolina. Yeah. And the scandal was uh, when those kids were in middle and high school, their parents got divorced in a very messy way and in such a way that the court records showed us like what the kids would get. And so we just knew that those two boys were going to be molt like 50 million plus millionaires when they turned 25 because yeah. that's when their trust would activate. And so like it was very interesting to like, saw the girls are hitting on them when they're 24. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That's a long term investment. There you go. Be like, that's a junk bond yeah. in the truest sense. <laughs> I played lacrosse with both of them and like one of them was a goofy ass lacrosse player and like he would run and like cradle kind of funny so his nickname was the emu because his head would like jerk forward and stuff. <laughs> emu. Yeah. That's great. Oh, a good lacrosse story too from my side since we're talking lacrosse. Uh, I actually won a JV lacrosse tournament my uh, senior year of high school. <laughs> so our coach signed us up for this tournament. And it was on a Sunday, the tournament, and there's no coach player contact on Sundays. Yeah. So our coach actually couldn't be at the tournament, and it was the day after Halloween. Yeah. So our senior team showed up, and the freshman team showed up with no coaches. So they had parents coaching their team, and we were just running our team by ourselves. You know, it was just the inmates had the keys. It was fun. Nice, nice. <laughs> After everybody was hungover, it was great. And then, yeah, so we were just dicking around the whole tournament, just messing around. Everybody's playing different positions. In instead of rankings by uh, how many games you won, we won all the games. It was by how many goals scored. Okay. And we were winning games like 3 nothing, 4 nothing, like super low-scoring games. Yeah. And then, so it comes to the playoffs for it, and they put our freshman team in the varsity bracket, 
and they put our senior team, us, in the JV bracket for playoffs because we didn't score any goals. <laughs> so then we're in the senior bracket just playing these freshman kids, like eighth graders out of high school. <laughs> And we just, yeah, we beat them up. We won the game nice and easy. And then we got these cool camouflage hats. Yeah. That are like JV lacrosse champs. And we're like, hell yeah, I still have that hat. I'm like, that's a great ask, trophy. Like, you still have that? Yeah, <laughs> I'm good like, for I keep you. that. Build your dream dodgeball team. Three people you get to have on it. Real or fantasy. So I think, I think I'm going with Randy Johnson first. He's got the size, the range, and the accuracy. I think Simone Biles is... Uh, that's, a, that's a good one. She's a very good one. That's um, going to be hard to hit. Yeah, she's very hard to hit. She's an athlete, too. So the thing is, she's also probably really good at catching them. Yeah. You know, because she can contort. She can also probably jump up. Like, you think you're getting a face shot. And then she, like, mm -hmm. jumps up, and it's all in her, like, her gut and shit. That's yeah, easy for her. <laughs> and then, you know, I'm going to have to go back to my Duke roots. Can I go back in time? Yeah. I'm going to go with Shane Battier. You know, that's just my one of my favorite all-around Duke guys, and I feel like he's just a heady player. You know, he's an intelligent guy, and he'd be, yeah. be the leader. You know, he would be like Yeah, you need a field general out there. Yeah, he's the medium-hot oatmeal between Randy Johnson's fire and Simone Biles' ice. You know, so he's like, come on, guys. Like, we can do this together. That's a good question. I like that one yeah. a lot. What about you? Uh, yeah, I was going a little bit different, but those are good people. Mine is, uh, first one, Patrick Mahomes. Yeah, good. Definitely. Nice. Second one, I was going with kind of like uh, Simone Biles, Air Bud. Yeah, he's dude, coming back. That's a callback. He's running back and forth. You can't get that, man. I just think, dude, he's catching balls left and right. Yeah, yeah, he is. Yeah, you don't want to mess with him. And then I was thinking, like, Deadpool. Okay. On the yeah. fantasy side, like, dude, trying to hit that guy, that'd be a pain. Like and Deadpool. him talking shit, you know? He would be so good at talking shit. He would be so good at, like, you know, his agility. But, like, I feel like he would break the rules very quickly and very early. Yeah, every team needs a dog like that on their yeah. side. Like, I play in a lot of sports leagues, and my problem I always say is all my friends are great. I love them, but they're all too nice. I'm like, we need a dog on our team. Like, we need an Antonio Brown. That's Randy Johnson for me, man. Randy, Randy Johnson's Johnson. my dog. Like, Randy, Randy keep to leave, you know? Randy Johnson's going to, like, hit people in the face, which doesn't technically get you out in, like, you know, some dodgeball leagues, but, like, it teaches people a lesson. It sets the tone. Yeah. It's like one of my favorite stories was uh, keep to leave with the Broncos in the Super Bowl. That like one of the first drives, he got like a face mask penalty for throwing him out of the ground. And Darian Stewart told him, he's like, dude, what are you doing? He's like, chill out. He's like, dude, I'm setting the tone. Yeah. He's like, I'm fucking setting the tone this game. Yeah. He's like, we ain't been playing. There you go. Would you rather go to prison for five years or until you can eat a wooden door? Like, Other than like the doorknob and the metal wood. parts, but just all the wood. Do I get tools and like cooking supplies? Yeah, you can cut it up. You do whatever you want to eat that door. I think, you know, I think with enough soaking, enough vinegar, and enough, like, um, other things, like, I could eat the door in less than six months. Am I out of jail while I'm eating the door? Yeah, you're out of jail as soon as you finish that door. Well, okay, so I'm in jail eating yeah, the door. Uh, yeah, you're in jail for five years or basically until you eat the wooden door off the cell or get it, you know, cook it down. I feel like cell doors are made out of metal. Well, this is a wooden door one yeah, for you. Yeah, okay. okay so, so I'm eating my door <laughs> yeah, is what you're saying. <laughs> so, I, so I only have the food in the prison. Bro, those feel equal, you know? Like, And then the thing is, I feel like by the time I eat the door, I've eaten a lot of wood, and then it's like, like, hey, it's you've been years. here for four years and three months. I'll be like, well, fuck it. Yeah, get me out of here. Is it worth eating a, a lose, door lose. for yeah, seven months? Yeah, it's a lose-lose. <laughs> That's a good rep in prison, though. People would stay away from me be like, hey, it's that guy who eats wood. Oh, don't worry. He just eats his door all day like he a beaver. He eats his door all day. You know, it's like, yeah, he's like shit and splinters. Yeah. <laughs> All right, this next one's another great question for our last question here. Would you jerk off LeBron James for his talents? All right, let's widen up the question. Any professional athlete for his talents? <laughs> the questions really go downhill at the end. Yeah, um, I'm trying to think. Do people know I did it? Uh, nah, we'll say no. Oh, okay. Well, I mean, <laughs> that's just... I Unless mean, you get caught jerking off LeBron James. I mean, you're really asking me about five It's basically like Ted 2, the movie. Yeah, you're just asking me about five minutes of my time for greatness. You know, like, what am I willing to do for greatness? And, like, it's not it's not a blowjob. So, I mean, you know, do I? does he have to finish? Yeah. Like, I have to try. Yeah. I have to have... have I guess the next question is, is it prime LeBron James or are you getting LeBron James now? So, you're like, you know you're only good at basketball for, like, another, like, three, four years. No, I want prime LeBron James because that's also prime come quickly because I'm a young man type. True. <laughs> you know, it's so like, I don't want now LeBron James where it's like, hey, do you have some Cialis? You know, like, <laughs> do we have to wait 15 minutes? Like, it's been three hours. You have to call a doctor? Man, um... I think, like, you know, I think, no, comment. <laughs> no, no, it's cool. I'm trying to think about what athlete I would want to do this to, and it might be a golfer or a soccer player. Cause like low risk of injury, high visibility, pretty decent schedule, you know, so like a golfer might be the preferable one or, or 
DeChambeau, Bryson. Bryson DeChambeau. <laughs> yeah, like that guy has a little fupa. So like maybe I could like put some distance between myself and him, you know? Yeah, he probably won't even know. He has yeah, exactly. Nice I, could do it, I could do it on the slide. He's like, got like a nice sleep mask on. You don't even know. Exactly. It's like Space Jam too, yeah. where like I don't just get his abilities. I steal them and he doesn't have them anymore. And he's like, what the <laughs> fuck happened? And be like, I don't know, motherfucker, but I can crush this ball. And then that, that'd be a great movie. And then it's like a super villain. You are fighting him in the next competition, next game. He's like yeah. playing. And he's like, who the hell is this guy? How did he get my skills? Yeah. Yeah, exactly. And then he has to jerk you off to get his skills back. I know. That's the movie. It's an Ocean's Eleven style tale. <laughs> yes. Because the twist is at the end is he's already jerked me off. I knew it. It was in my heart. It's a scout's rule. Really has to have him go back both ways, you know? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> All right. Last segment of the podcast here, which is my favorite. It's where we drink Capri Suns. Nice. So how fast do you think you could drink a Capri Sun? Um, I think I could drink a Capri Sun in less than eight seconds. Less than eight seconds? Yes. Well, it counts time pointing the straw in two. Oh, okay. As the uh, world record is eight seconds, and here's the BarCast leaderboard. I got to grab the Capri Suns because wow, I put them under a different really table. Nice well, 18 seconds. I think I could do this faster than some of these people. 26 seconds. Okay, number Oh, Chris, he's so cool. He did his in nine seconds. Actually, I haven't updated the leaderboard yet. Wes Williams is number one now. Nice. Chris okay. is number two. Yeah. Okay. But yeah, I taped him under a different table, so I had to bring him back over here. Okay, cool. I'm going to put down this mic. Oh, nice. Okay, a mic stand. Because I'm really, I'm overly competitive, so I want to win. Now, here's the cool thing. I do this for my kids a lot, so I might have a little competitive advantage. Do people flip it? To flip it? Oh, like the backside? Yeah. Uh, Brad Williams did that. And how did he do? Okay, he did okay. He did okay, but he's the only one who's tried that so far. He okay. We had bad straws that round. Old school. That's old school. Yeah. This is like, I'm really into that movie Tombstone. It's like we're quick drawing. Do you, wait, do you go every time too? Yeah. Fuck yeah. You lost your straw, bro. Oh, there it is. Okay. So you can take the straw off the thing. Okay. But it's still there. So it's halfway. All right. You ready? We'll go five, four, three, two, one, go. Five, four, three, two, one, go. Ah, that's the hardest part. I took it for granted. Mm. Fuck, I forgot to time us. <laughs> we'll know in post-production, yeah, but we'll know. I do that every time. God damn it. <laughs> Yeah, that was empty. Fast. That's empty. That was quick. That was nice. I, I, went, I exercised before this, so I'm parched. That was good. Yeah, so we're going to have to do a quick cut of us what you winning, breaking the record, and one with you sad. Yeah. That way we have both endings, you know. It's there like, we go. <laughs> okay, wait, wait. <laughs> breaking the record. Unbelievable. <laughs> I just take another Gatorade here and I douse yeah. you. <laughs> or get more Capri Suns. Like, yeah, I just start spraying you with Capri Suns. So let's nice. go. <laughs> Yeah. But yeah. All right. That's all for this episode of the podcast. Don't forget to drop a like and subscribe. We're giving away a toaster, 10K subscribers on YouTube, baby. Nice. Tell me where to find you, Drew. Anything else you want to shout yep. out? Um, episode drops I'm next on, Monday. I'm on Instagram and I'm at Jersey Comic CEO. I always wear a sports jersey. I'm also producing a show at Rise. It'll be on December 6th at 10 p.m. Go to their website, get some tickets. I'll see you there. Hell yeah. Subscribe. Subscribe. Toaster. Toaster.